And we're back, folks. Uh, still no Tom Gibson, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, having depressed you, hopefully, in the front part, uh, the first segment, let me pump you up a little bit. Uh, one of the biggest areas I spend my time looking at is uh, health-related things, medicine. And uh, I very much pay attention to cancer in particular, both because I've been diagnosed with it uh, way back in 2009 and uh, because so many other people are fighting the disease. And uh, one of the uh, major issues I have is the fact that we are constantly told by oncologists and other doctors to go either the route of chemotherapy, radiation, and or surgery, usually all three. And everything I've been studying over the years indicates that's about the worst thing <clears throat> excuse me, you can do, especially uh, when you're first diagnosed. Unfortunately, fear hits everybody. It hit me. And you almost panic uh, the minute you're told you have cancer, and you're more or less willing to accept anything the doctors say. And uh, it's only natural. We spend our lives relying on doctors and the system to do what's right for us. Unfortunately, as Ray sees at the uh, courthouse and we see all over the world, if you pay attention, we're not really uh, in the position where people are doing things for our good. They're doing it for money, power, and control in the most part. So cancer, I feel, is a money-making bonanza for many, many people in the system. Trillions upon trillions of dollars has been spent, but yet people die from cancer all the time, and the uh, survival rate is about what it was 30 years ago. Um, so for me, I, I started saying to myself, there's got to be a better approach, and that approach revolved around nutrition and especially the immune system. Because if my research and people like Dr. Reiner and so many other doctors I've talked to are right, we have cancer throughout our lives. But our body's immune system recognizes and gets rid of the cancer constantly. Uh, for people to be told by doctors that you do or don't have cancer is ridiculous because there's 100 trillion cells in our body and no doctor, no test, no nothing can ever say you do or do not have cancer throughout all those cells. So my approach is to boost my immune system as much as I can, avoid anything like radiation or chemo because that destroys your immune system. And certainly if worse came to worse and I was at death's door, I might give in. But until then, I'm going to go with juicing, with vegetables, and things like that. But there is hope in the future, and again, it all revolves around getting rid of this corrupt system that we're under. And that includes the FDA, uh, the cancer societies, and all the rest. And uh, the researchers have to be freed to truly go after a cure for cancer. One of the promising new ways is called tocotrienols. And basically, uh, there are two substance to substances that can target and remove aging and senile cells. And the battle of cancer is moving in promising new directions. And this is all through natural things. But scientists, and I, I get access to this all the time, where they are making progress. Dave, we got you on the phone. What do you got for me? Well. I got, she's talking about surgery. I got hooked up with a, a couple of these laser surgeons, one of these laser surgeons here. They cut the hole in my prostrate and he cut the hole the wrong way. Now I'm leaking all night. I don't sleep. And uh, I'd like to wring his neck, but I know it couldn't get the job done if I went down there. And I'd probably end up in jail, so I can't, <laughs> not a damn thing I can do about it. And uh, I, I want to, make people aware of this guy because I talked to some of these people that said they wish they had talked to me before 
I had it done, and I wished I had it too because I wouldn't have. I'd never get that done with a with that guy there. I won't. I mean, I won't mention his name, but I just want people to be aware of what's going on. So I you, hope to God they never get mixed up with, a, with something like this again. Just so we're clear, Dave, your prostate has had grown. It was an enlarged prostate, and it was pinching off your urethra. So you were having trouble urinating. Is that right? No, I never had any trouble. In fact, I'm urinating too much now. I should have left it like it was. There was nothing. But I wanted to, somebody said, oh, he'd pick you right up good. You'd be in a hell of a lot better shape, but I don't think so. Well, why did they cut a hole in your prostate? Was it cancer? No. No, nothing wrong with it. Just uh, uh, so, I could, so I could urinate better. Okay. Yes. But I never have any. I've been having trouble urinating too much, and now I'm really urinating too much <laughs> all night long and part of the day, too. Yeah, I, I had a friend that had that issue, and he was about to get it done through the VA. And uh, it so happened about three people I had talked to had a similar issue as you did, where they had that uh, operation where they cut out some of the prostate, and it, it had horrible complications. That's what I had. He cut a whole I did. I told him right straight out. I was mad. I was really mad. I really, I, don't, I knew he was really getting mad, but I was mad this time. And I told him, you cut the hole in the wrong spot. You don't know any better. Oh, no, I didn't either. Like hell, he didn't. I know. And uh, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just one of those things that I'll be, I won't be able to sleep the rest of my life. Well, I, I, I sure hope. I'm seven it... years old, so it don't make much difference. I'm probably the end of my rope. It, how old are you, Dave? 87. Oh, wow. Well, you've lived a great life, haven't you? I see all the time at the DA's meetings and the commission, county commission meetings. Oh, I missed today, but I wanted to go over there today about, uh, well, there's $10 million I want to make sure that the county got from the Valley Electric. And they haven't even got the money yet, but they're already seeing what they're going to get. And they said, they were going to give them five, five million, and give them the rest in property. The hell with the property! I want the whole ten million, but I, I didn't go over there today because the uh, Valley Electric hasn't even got the money yet. Yeah. Yeah, that. I that, hope that, they get. It. I told, I told one of the commissioners, I said, give it all to the county. Well, I don't. We should, be, we should get the money ourselves, but I wouldn't, wouldn't amount to that much. Let, let the commissioners have it. Yeah. What I want is what I really want is an indoor swimming pool in this town. I've been fighting for 15 years to get that, and I haven't got the I haven't got the first base yet. Yeah. I don't pay attention to anybody around this town anyway. Okay, Dave. Well, thanks for calling in, and I agree 100% that people should think twice before you have that surgery with the uh, uh, prostate. Uh, if you're having trouble urinating because there are complications and they tell you there are but uh, people tend not to believe the complications when in, when in fact it really can nail a lot of people. This guy didn't tell me nothing. He's, he's a wise, arrogant guy in to boot. He said, don't you have a phone? And I was down to this, down to uh, uh, Calvada down there getting a over to that doctor every day getting a, they put a catheter on me. He went to Italy someplace and I had that damn catheter on me for about 10 days there running around there and uh, I had to go down there every day to get a, it was leaking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, Dave, you got anything else? No, that's about it. I, I remember you too. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for calling in. Okay. Okay, yeah, that and that's, uh, I've told my story before on TV, but I'll say it again. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer back in 2009, and uh, I didn't want to go into the surgery or uh, radiation or anything until I had more time to research it. But like an idiot, I agreed to take this drug called Lupron, and it basically triggered all my heart problems. So I've had two open hearts and all kinds of issues because of the cancer drug that really did absolutely nothing. 
and I blame myself for being stupid enough to agree to it, but there again, the oncologists scare you into doing these things. So the time to get informed is before you're diagnosed and to understand that there are other options. There's so many people that have been uh, cured by treating themselves through uh, improved diet and uh, eliminating all the, all the toxins that we inhale every day in our food, water, and air. So uh, there is alternatives. Okay, we've got uh, Roxanne on the line. How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you, Chuck? Great. I'm glad you beat the cancer, and you're right about the nutrition part of it. That's the way they're saying to go now, but that's not why I'm calling. I'm supposed to make a brief here. So um, the Diane Lake and her not getting her uh, protective order because her stalker is a deputy from Knight County, and Judge Sullivan has, uh, it's in front of him. Do you know if he's fine that yet? Could you talk a little bit about that? And uh, I'm going to get off the phone, okay? I'm really interested. I want to know what's going on with that. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard anything new uh, lately. Uh, basically, the allegations are that a police officer has uh, been harassing this lady and uh, actually... Uh, physically roughed her up, etc. And uh, she wanted to report it uh, and also to obtain a protective order against them. So she applied at the courthouse and after they told her to, that it wasn't right and she resubmitted it and all that, uh, the judge who was supposed to have a, a uh, hearing on it, the way I understand it, uh, basically said we're not going to because it's a internal matter at the NCSO. Now, if I'm wrong on anything I said, I, I'm hearing this secondhand. So I don't want to say this is exactly what happened. But uh, this lady, Diane Lake, has done what I think we all should do, is if you feel wrong by the system, don't roll over and say, oh, well, I got to take it. She's pursuing it. She's written complaints. Uh, with the Nevada Judiciary Commission. Uh, and to me, that, that is the answer, is we can't accept when we are wronged by no matter who does it, the government, uh, the police, the prosecutors. We've got to absolutely not take it, take it because you end up being afraid to walk outside the house. Okay, we're going to go to break. Time's flying. Thanks for calling in.